Hello, good morning. It is April 18th, 2023, and I'm excited to be welcoming you to another Taco Tuesday here at Will's. Um, today, we've got four presenters lined up for us, and uh, the first of those is Steve Roses joining us from Hein Online. Hello, so everyone. I'm going to turn things over to Steve. Steve, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you can take the reins. Okay. I'm going to start the slideshow here. Can everyone see my my uh, PowerPoint now? We don't see it yet. Do you have, have you clicked that little share screen button? Okay. Uh, let me try it again. Share screen, screen, share, and... Can everyone see my screen now? Yes. You can see okay, now we just have to go back to the beginning of the slideshow. Looks good. Okay, excellent. So um, some of you are probably familiar with Hein Online and some of you are not. So Hein Online is a research database, uh, originally specializing in law, but then expanding to government and politics and now is multidisciplinary, obviously with some focus on the social sciences, but we do branch out cross-disciplinary, even to um, things like STEM, et cetera. Um, but we cover issues like gender studies. We cover issues like uh, the relationship between religion and the law. We cover issues like American history. So really an extensive array of content in Hein Online, very exciting. Um, and many of you subscribe, some of you do not. And those of you who are academic institutions that do not subscribe, you're certainly welcome to have a free trial with us. So after uh, this uh, demonstration, you're, you're welcome to ask for a trial if you don't currently have one. If you already subscribe to our Hein Online academic package, as many of you do, we're also having a spring sale on additional Hein Online collections. And I will mention some of those Hein Online collections as I proceed with the PowerPoint. But let's get it, begin. So a little bit about Hein Online Academic. It's a multidisciplinary academic research database and we now have over 40 databases or 40 collections which are part of uh this university or college database um we do also have subscribers in 150 other countries uh, in addition to the us but what the, we're offering you is obviously our us focused high online academic um which is different than the high online academic global um in complementing the wealth of primary resources, such as government documents, such as case law, such as books, uh, so, uh, we have, in addition, we have over 19,000 monographs and treatises. We have over uh, 3,100 multidisciplinary journals, and we cover more than 1,500 different research topics. Some of the topics in Hein Online include history, education, criminal justice, religion, gender studies, economics, and much more. We're also known for our customer service and we're also known for being very inexpensive, just to point that out as well. So why Hein Online Academic? As I mentioned, it's affordable. Um, in addition, it's comprehensive. We now have nearly, or we will soon have nearly 3,300 multidisciplinary journals. We keep adding new journals every single month. So a few months back, it was 3,100 journals. Before that, it was 3,000 journals. Now we're approaching 3,300 journals. 1,500 research subjects. We have something called Pathfinder that where we have go through all the different documents on Hein Online and we subject code them. Um, and so we've identified 1,500 key research disciplines. We like to combine all this primary and secondary content with intuitive tools. Some of them use things like machine learning and AI um, to research, uh, to assist with the research. And then we have an extensive, ever-growing array of help resources, ever-growing array of libguides, YouTube videos. We have live chat from 8.30 to 6, Monday through Friday, Eastern time, and a whole potpourri of um, helpful guides and tips and tricks. And we also have a blog, and we also have um, we let you know about uh, external resources on the different topics we cover. Okay, uh, I mentioned Pathfinder, and Pathfinder is where we created a hierarchy, a digital hierarchy, a taxonomy, if you will, of the different topics in Hein Online. 
And some of the broad categories are things like applied sciences, humanities, industries, natural and formal sciences, social sciences, et cetera. Um, we, we show you those hierarchies, both in this graphical representation, which you can see a little bit on the right. Of course, it would be bigger on your screen because it would have, um, this is, you're just seeing part of the screen with it. And it will have, uh, it has all the different topics and subtopics and categories in these different main areas. And then ultimately it takes you to the individual documents in those particular disciplines. Um, and you can do that both with the uh, hierarchy uh, in, in list form, as well as this graphical representation. Um, if you would like to get High Online Academic, um, you would first start with a trial if you don't currently have it. And then through Wills, we offer a first year subscription discount of 50%. So it's already a low price, but then we give a 50% first year discount on it. Uh, then there, in addition, as you renew, there's a perpetual renewal discount of 5%. Um, that was based on if there are one to 10 will subscribers, as the will subscribers grow, it became becomes 10%. And then if it gets to over 21 will subscribers, it'll become a perpetual discount on renewals of 15%. So it's in everyone's interest. The more subscribers we get, the best through wills, the better your subscription uh renewal discounts will be. Um, but subscribers now receive a 10% perpetual discount. Um, and any of you who are members of Wills that do not have a high online academic subscription, do ask us for a free six month trial. All we need is your IP addresses and your proxy server. We can set you up with remote access as well as on premises access. Um, and then we have a whole slew for those of you who already subscribed through Tahan Online, a whole slew of additional collections to augment your, your existing resources too, uh, of which we have a spring uh, sale going on. And I can send you a list of the collections you don't yet have um, if you're a subscriber and you can use the sale uh, to add perhaps some of those collections as well. Um, so what have we been adding over the last few uh, months and years? Well, we have this Hide Online Social Justice Suite. Any of you who do not subscribe to Hide Online are welcome to uh, get this for free. This is the Social Justice Suite, which includes a collection on slavery in America, a collection on gun regulation and legislation in America, a collection on civil rights and social justice, a human rights collection called Open Society Justice Initiative, and now, most recently, an LGBTQ rights uh, which, uh, collection, which includes a wonderful timeline on LGBTQ uh, history. So um, just be aware of that. That's an amazing, ever-expanding suite of free databases. Um, we also, in the High Online Academic, have a military and government collection. We've just recently added a whole new part of that um, in cooperation with the U.S. Army JAG School, they had a lot of additional um, military materials. So they included um, all sorts of additional military materials that we've both added uh, to the uh, military and government collection that's on High Online Academic, as well as you can access it separately as its own collection on High, High Online Academic. But you can see it has an ever-growing array of uh, materials adding to the military and government collection. Um, we have a brand new collection, which is um, an additional uh, collection on labor and employment. Um, the price ranges from, depending on your FTE, $395 for perpetual access to $495 to per for perpetual access. Um, and it's a one-time fee, and we're going to continue updating it. It has landmark cases. It has key aspects of the life of an American worker, such as uh, labor unions, minimum wage, pensions and retirement. So if any of your schools or institutions are involved with labor or employment or studying the American worker, this is going to be a great add-on that you can consider. Um, and then we have something on a very, very important um, issue that affects virtually every state and every country in the, in the world, which is water rights and resources, everything from uh, this type of situation that happened in Flint, Michigan, to uh, identifying who has the rights to water, uh, the uh, environmental regulations about water, like the Clean Water Act, dams and hydropower, drinking water, sewers and sewage, water delivery and storage. It's a huge area. Um, we have a special perpetual access uh, price for that if you'd like to add that to your collection. 
Um, so those who subscribe already can get the perpetual access price. Those who don't subscribe to anything could also get this, but it would be a more of a subscription. Um, we also have, as I mentioned, a spring savings event where you can uh, save money on collections like animal studies or business and legal aspects of sports and entertainment or indigenous peoples or in immigration or international trade or United Nations materials. It goes on and on. We have special discounts and we would love you to take advantage of that, especially if you're an existing subscriber and want to add more things to your collections. And as you may have seen, I'm Steve Roses. I'm doing the uh, presentation, but we regularly have monthly webinars uh, by people like Tim Hoagie and Roxanne Marmion as well. Um, and we're going to have a monthly webinar this month as well. So just be aware of that. But you can contact us about getting a six month free trial if you don't currently subscribe. Follow us on social media. Um, we're talking about Twitter. We're talking about Instagram. We're talking about TikTok. Yes, a LinkedIn, it, we're in all of these, and we welcome you to find us there and follow us. So with that all said, uh, do we have, how much additional time do we have, Jeff? Do we have any additional time? Steve, you're, there's three minutes uh, still remaining before we would switch over. Does anyone have a any questions that I can answer um, within this three minutes of time? I haven't seen anything come into the chat yet, but if anybody here in the live session wants to throw a message into chat, feel free or. Uh, okay, if you think of a question, either now or after the today, just feel free to email me at sroses at wsheim.com. That's uh, S-R-O-S-E-S at W-S-H-E-I-N.com. And Jeff also has that email as well. And uh, so just be aware of that. And you can always contact me with any questions. Um, but I guess we can use this time to turn things over to Jeff. Um, and um, just wish everyone a, a great rest of the day and a great rest of the Taco Tuesday. Thanks so much, Steve. Uh, always a great presentation. And uh, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, we've got a, what a great value that uh, Hein is offering, especially with how much is expanding. So I hope everyone watching reaches out for more information or trial uh, to, uh, to take a look at it. Thanks again, Steve. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to kind of go back to sharing my screen just to get us set up for our next presenter. Hopefully, here we go. All right, so setting us up for uh, our next presenter, Coming to us from uh, Mackin is our friend Sherry. Sherry, uh, can you uh, can you hear me? All yes, right. I'm just um, updating my name to put Mackin in here. Oh, great. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and that should hopefully make it easy for you to share yours, and then it'll be it'll be all you. All right. All right. Um, well, I'm Sherry. I am the Wisconsin representative for Mackin Educational Resources, and Mackin serves thousands of schools, um, actually about close to 40,000 schools, so a pretty big number. Um, and we're most well known in the library and classroom. Um, this time of year, we talk a lot about classroom reading. So I'm just going to give a couple um, points on Mackin.com, um, just some kind of like navigation so that if you do go to Mackin.com to try to navigate that you have some ideas on um, different features you can use, things that you can use for free. Um, and then we'll kind of focus in on the um, family literacy resources. But I'm just going to start by just kind of doing a really, really quick overview on how to use Mackin.com. And if anyone wants to reach out and have like a one on one Zoom meeting, we do those a lot. So then we customize for school libraries um, or classrooms or whoever needs assistance. Um, so I'm already logged in, um, but it's a free membership to use Mackin. You do need to log in to see pricing and all of the products. Um, so once you're logged in, if you wanted to um, Create. I'm actually gonna oops, start a new list here for the sake of demo. 
I'll call it Caco Tuesday. So if I were going to create a list for my library, I would name it whatever is relevant for you. So maybe it is the spring list, or maybe you have an elementary, middle, high school. Um, you only need one account for Mackin, so you don't need to log in for your different schools. And you don't have to fill all of this out. As I mentioned, we have a lot of different schools. Um, so some schools do need a dollar limit in their account, or um, there's certain things that they need to put in here. Um, but the two that you absolutely need to to, uh, fill out in order to create a list is um, the name and the description. So I picked library for circulation. So in this case, that would be so if you ordered anything from Mackin, it would come shelf ready with your spine labels, with your barcodes, all of that standard processing um, that you would set up with us before an order. Um, so then if you were looking for a book, you could type in um, a title. I usually leave it as keyword. You could do um, the author title, if you'd like, um, I'll do Dear Justice, because the keyword is still going to pick up um, the book that I was looking for, but I could also look for title, author, ISBN. Um, and then when I pull up these searches, if I click on the title, it'll show me all of the different formats that this book is in. So it'll show me that I could get this book in paperback or Mac and Bound, and Mac and Bound is the version of our books that we guarantee for the life of it being in print. Um, so I just like to point that out. Shipping times are still a little bit tough with the supply chain because schools have so much money right now, which is a blessing, um, but the, the supply chain hasn't quite caught up as fast as what we had hoped. So there is, are still some delays. Um, so if you're looking at ordering anything, um, definitely sooner than later here. Um, but one thing I wanted to highlight is you can also look up Mac and title lists. So we do a lot of customization for lists. So if, um, and this will start to transition to that family literacy part, if you wanted to create a list specifically for your school um, that was for your students to bring home, for example, you could talk to our custom, um, our collection development team, and they will customize a list for you. So then you can give them the parameters, your budget, whatever you want, and our master librarians, so everyone that works on that team would be a master librarian, would put a list together for you. Um, a lot of times we create these lists that are good for all over the country. So we created the list for you, but we might say, we get a lot of those requests. Um, so something for maybe I'll type Spanish. We get a lot of requests from um, different schools saying, um, I need a list of Spanish titles. I need specifically elementary Spanish fiction, for example. So this is a search feature that I find a lot of people don't know exists. So you could, instead of using keyword and looking for just a title, I could choose Mac and title lists. And then I could dive into this and get into Spanish fiction and it pulls up these different lists. So then to add anything to my list, I just put a check mark in it. So it's just a place to start. So if you um, wanted to have a list just to kind of start thinking of what to what you wanted to curate on your own list, um, it's a great feature to use. And then we also have all of these different menu options. So under digital, we have uh, Mac and Via and we have our eBooks, our audio books, databases, um, everything you could um, need to find, you're going to use at this top title menu. Um, and then uh, Mac and Via itself is free. We talked about that at our last um, Taco Tuesday, I think. Um, but then you could look, if you're browsing, you could look for new and upcoming titles, uh, staff picks, Mac and recommend. So we have all these different features. So if you're just trying to work in your library, um, we spent a lot of time in the background creating all of these really, really great tools and resources that you can use for free. Um, so you can see that we have library, classroom, makerspace, PD, um, so all of these great things. So now under classroom, you can look at take home summer reading. Um, there are also things like classroom libraries, live libraries, um, but summer reading is a really hot topic right now. Um, it is probably too late. Uh, we are not taking many more um, back to school summer orders, but it is not too late to get the free stuff, <laughs> uh, meaning things that you could download and um, use for free. So um, you can order, so every year, 
we do these packs where we put a reading journal together and then different titles that you can put in the pack and then students can bring it home. Um, we are limited on what we have left because schools had so much um, budgets this year that most of them are getting close to sold out. But you can actually you get a lot of the resources right in um, from Mackin.com, you can pull up all of these different um, family resources. So under here, it says view our family literacy resources. So you can click now. This is something that if you bought the packs, you would get in print in the um, packets. You would get your review or your actual journal. Um, so you can actually get that for free. So this is a really great thing. You could download a print or digital version of the elementary reading journal or the secondary reading journal. So that's a really great value. So even if you didn't purchase books for your students um, to bring home, you could suggest that they go to the library, um, to their public library and get books. And then they would have these reading journals as a companion. But then there's also a whole bunch of activity guides, which are really great, and they are separated by um, grade level. So you can see there's grade K2, grade 3, 5, 6, 8, and 9, 12 activities. I did open a few of them for um, explanation purposes. So for example, in this K2 um, SEL PDF that we have, this is something um, that you could use right away. It doesn't really have to be take home reading. A, a teacher or librarian could use it in any way that they wanted to, but a lot of times it's hard to find resources that are truly free. Um, so these you could download so you don't just have to go to a Google search to try to find them. But for example, um, this worksheet says for instructions, look at a book you're reading and pick a character, name what they're feeling, and then draw that feeling in the box. And then it goes through some different ideas. Uh, can you find someone who's sad, someone who's happy, someone who's angry, and so forth. Um, so that's um, one of them. We also have bingo, so you could create uh, your own bingo card. Um, I did not open it, but there's also a pre um, created bingo card where it's like read a book under a tree, um, but we had some feedback of um, teachers coming back and saying actually could we create our own because something might not be relevant in in different um, climates, for example, so. Um, so they can change things here um, and same idea another K 12 would be um, draw yourself as a character of the book you're reading. Um, write down what your name would be if you were in the book and see what you were doing. So um, again, all just free resources that you could direct students um, or direct teachers um, to share with their families. Um, because there is the summer slide, of course, we're that summer slide is hurting more now with COVID on top of it. We're just um, struggling to get kids to read enough in the summer. So these are all just free things that you can use. Um, and then I brought up some examples for three to five. There's a reading, um, there's writing prompts here. Um, there's, I like this one a lot, 30 days of reading and writing outside. So it's a good idea to um, use this to encourage kids to go outside. Um, I know I have a middle schooler at home and I think she only likes to go outside if it's like 72 degrees and sunny. So 71 might be a little chilly if a cloud comes. I mean, it's just, it's just different than when I was growing up that I would never want to sit inside. We might've made it too comfy for them. So I actually use this one. I really like it um, and encourage them to go outside. Um, and then there are, um, there's an emoji PDF that you can use. There's also some high school um, version, uh, some high school PDFs in there too that um, you could do this point of view um, t-shirt for example, but they're just examples out of all the things that you can get out there. So um, I'm just a fan of the price tag, which is free. Um, so you can download these. Um, and then if you have any questions at all for anything at Mackin, um, for sure, reach out to us, um, but I'll also just scroll down a little bit more on this page. Um, and then again, I got here from going under classroom, um, take home summer reading, and then family literacy resources. So there's also podcasts for students, uh, videos for students, and different websites. And then there are all these really great quick tips for reading at home. Um, there is, um, there's just the um, a lot of resources that you can use. So. Um, we created quite a few of these for the take home packs that people were purchasing and then we found that we were we didn't want to limit just the people that bought the actual take home packs um, so they made these 
free just a couple of years ago, but I think a lot of people don't realize that you can download them. So um, that is pretty much all I have, unless there's any questions. I know I'm a fast talker, always have been, but it gives me time to answer any questions if you have them. No problem at all, Sherry. Um, I haven't seen any questions come in yet, but um, I will say, as always, it's so cool to see what Mackin has to offer and all the uh, amazing support that you can uh, provide for our libraries. It's so cool. Um, Mackin is uh, one of our order direct vendor partners. So for any Wills members who aren't totally clear on the distinction and order direct is a, one of our vendor partners that you will order directly with <laughs> and uh, you'll take advantage of our, our relationship rather than uh, some of our other vendor partners where your order might flow through our will the will system so uh, if you have any questions about that of course but please reach out to us uh, and I know that uh, Sherry will join me in inviting you to reach out if you've got any questions about Mac and uh, to us or to her. We'll probably put you in touch with her anyway if you've got questions uh, for us, so. I, um, so. I just did find something that people might question. Um, Evans is my super secret last name. I use Omer, Nick, Ed, and Mackin. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't now I'm you're sorry, in. I was just like, I was going to glance and say, um, if you need to email me, it's sherry.omernick at mackin.com. And then I saw my name and I was like, or Evans, but that will not get to me. So <laughs> stick with Omer, Nick. Um, but you can always call. Um, so even though I am the Wisconsin rep, we all work together as a big team. So if you ask for anyone to help, um, they certainly can. You don't have to wait for me to get back to you. Um, and we do have a great discount program with um, WIMTA. So if you're a WIMTA member, um, you get even better pricing than with Mackin. So that's a good thing too. Fantastic. Great. Thank you again, Sherry, so much. Um, and uh, a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, and thanks for organizing it. My pleasure. All right, I'm going to take us back to our our uh, welcome screen again. Just get uh, everything teed up for our next presenter. Joining us now is uh, another one of our uh, Order Direct vendor partners. Uh, Shannon is joining us today from TDS Health. Shannon, uh, I think I see you. Are you on the line here? Yep, I am. Hi, Jeff. Hi. All right. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you can take over and share yours. Okay. Let's see. Share soon. Great. Can you see my screen here where it says TDSL? Yes. Looks okay. Good. Fantastic. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. And um, thanks, everyone who's able to join or review this later. Um, as Jeff mentioned, my name is Shannon. I'm with TDS Health. Our company has been around for over 30 years, and we work with various, or we partner with various uh, companies, publishers, medical societies, and such to offer a, a wide variety of various online healthcare resources. I know a lot of you are probably familiar with some of them that we offer, uh, such as our StatRef, um, ebook e-resource platform that was our flagship product when we first started over 30 years ago, as well as our Primal Pictures Anatomy resource and various resources. We do have some new products as well that we're really excited to start um, offering this year, which details will come later, Sentinel Use Simulations and Stat Pearls. Um, today, I'm going to focus on our Dickey product. So um, just go ahead and pull up the product itself. Now, Dickey is a comprehensive learning platform that covers all medical and biological sciences. It was created by Dr. Adam Fish, who's a practicing neurologist, and he created the product initially back in 2009 after um, he got out of his residency program, and it was initially based on how best he learned through medical school and residency, and he was also helping um, his fellow residents, uh, and the concept behind it was uh, draw it to know it, if you've heard of that product before, therefore the kind of odd name of Dickey. Um, and the concept behind it was um, basically if you can draw it and have that interactivity, it will help you learn and retain the information 
And then over the course of the next few years, he traveled around the country, uh, went to many universities and um, kind of got feedback from tons of faculty members and students on kind of the best presentation style and learning format. And then in 2016, he um, hired on some um, experts in basic science and created and further developed, I guess, the product and expanded it. So now the core part of this product is really uh, these whiteboard style video lectures. Um, they provide a, a kind of structured and logical flow of information. Um, and then uh, they're also kind of sets it apart from some of the other video resources out on the market today is that they're professionally scripted and illustrated. And then Dr. Fish himself is kind of presenting the information. In addition to these uh, core video lectures across all of these subject areas you see on the screen, um, there's also supporting materials. So every topic will have a corresponding uh, quiz materials with it. There are the drawing activities from the previous Draw It to Know It, uh, flashcards, text, and a lot of different materials in here, which can really support the, the learning and retention of some of this difficult information. Um, having these professionally scripted and um, this style of kind of learning that he's presenting. He's also able to take these really difficult subjects and make these much shorter videos to kind of keep the students' attention and stuff. So the courses themselves cover anywhere from high school, um, AP Biology, A&P Fundamentals, through undergraduate and then graduate. And we're looking at by topic as well, or by subject area, as well as by systems, depending on the learning style or teaching style. And then also some board prep courses uh, for the MCAT for biological sciences. He has some nursing, NP, PA, RN, uh, the USMLE, step one, two, three, and COMLEX. Uh, very detailed. Um, really amazing courses. And then he is a neurologist, so he has created the neurology residency uh, board prep materials as well for the right exam, as well as um, for uh, kind of this maintenance of certification and for CME. So really a wide variety of uh, various topics covering biological sciences, for all levels of learners. Now I'm gonna go ahead and jump into one real quick. Um, we'll take pathology. That's, I know, uh, kind of a difficult subject area for everyone. So we have pathophysiology and clinical pathology. Now, all of these subject areas are laid out in exactly the same way. So here I have all of the subjects within pathology here. Uh, looks like we have 19 various subjects, and then there are video tutorials and correspondence materials related to each subject area. So in order to find that material, you just click on the subject area to open it up kind of like a table of contents. So before I jump into one, I'm just going to point out a couple of additional areas. Um, in this line right here. First are the atlases and directories. Um, these are just additional materials students can use or faculty can use. It's abdominal CT. We have a MR, brain MRI atlas. The muscle nerve directory is really popular and it's, it's very thorough. Um, this was kind of Dr. Fish's subspecialty. And then some physical exam findings. Uh, the references are nice. Um, he does relate a lot of the information within the product itself uh, are kind of tied into some of those resources that you already use in the classroom. So you can see some of these key resources here. And then um, administrative features. Uh, there are a lot of really nice administrative features for faculty. 
Um, under this area, there's a lot of collateral that can easily be downloaded and used, some starter images, notes, PDFs, teaching slides, and then all of the questions can be pulled and used in whatever format you need. And then another nice area beyond just the typical full analytics that are available to administrators and faculty are these study plans. So a faculty member can create a custom study plan with all of tutorials based on what they're currently teaching uh, for the students to take this kind of customized plan. Um, now, if they don't want to take the time to do this, uh, Dickey has some amazing people that love to help and all they need is a syllabus or some kind of direction and they can create uh, these assignments for you. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and just jump into um, one of the areas right now, one of the subject areas, so I can give you a little closer look. Um, I'll just check out neuropathies and neurodevelopment disorders. So I click on it and it opens up the additional materials available um, based on this subject area. Uh, it starts with, Go down here. The very first video, neural tube defect, defects. Um, you can watch the tutorial and then take the quiz, um, little assessment to kind of um, help you reinforce that knowledge that you're learning. Below here are a list of all of the video tutorials for the subject area covering developmental disorders, special senses cranial neuropathies, and so forth. So it's broken down into these subsections. And if I scroll down even further, I have a large list of flashcards that go along with all of these different subject areas. Now these flashcards are going to be a really nice image with supporting text to help them further learn about these subject areas. High yield exercises. This is going to be using the, um, there's a drawing pad, that original draw it to know it. Um, it's a drawing pad for that interactivity. So students can do various exercises of drawing and labeling uh, to further reinforce knowledge. And then there's always the subject exam. This is an exam that covers everything they've learned. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into, I guess, one of these videos. Just the first one, the neural tube defects. Um, everything is set up the same. So any video you click on, it's set up exactly like this. We have the video here um, and I'll play this in just a moment. So you get a feel for what it, it looks like and sounds like. Uh, but the student can speed it up. I know they like to do that. Speed it up or slow it down. Uh, there are captions. There's also SD and HD in case your internet access isn't that great. You can switch over to SD. Over on the right hand side is going to be all of your text related to the video. So it starts off with some basic information on neural tube defects and they can scroll down and read up on all of the different areas that are being discussed in the videos. Um, anything highlighted in blue takes the student to supporting materials such as those flashcards and stuff. Um, you also have a transcript script area and up here the download, you can download the transcript, scripts, teaching slides, which are in a nice PowerPoint presentation so uh, faculty can easily use those into their PowerPoints. There's some notes and the drawn PDFs. So I'm just gonna click on this. You know, we have five minutes left. I'm just gonna click on this so you can kind of see how the structure of the video is. Here we'll learn about neural tube defects. Start a table. Denote that neural tube defects are anomalies of neural tube folding that involve neuralation. That involve, or however, or however, closed spinal are common, but but are by themselves. Point out the somites, which differentiate into axis. Okay, sorry, I kind of jumped around there, but and endoderm. It starts and 
It starts um, always showing these key points that they're learning. And as I had mentioned earlier, there's this really um, nice progression through the information that makes it easier for the students to learn and retain the information. And that was through all of Dr. Fish's research and feedback he received from faculty and students alike. So nice videos. Four brain relation. Let me stop that, sorry. Up at the top, I could go back to the course. Um, this is my overview of the video and the image. Next is the drawing pad. And if you click on that, it's going to provide the student the ability to do some specific exercises um, with that interactivity for that type of learner that when they draw something or they're interactive, it helps them learn. So they can draw along with the video, complete a starter image, label a diagram, or complete some drawing exercises. And I'll just close out of that. Um, over on the left-hand side are the tools. Um, you can do a different canvas. You can do a labeling canvas. Um, here's some labels. So this is just mainly the illustrations and you could take just, you know, these over here label as kind of an, an activity. And there's some additional features and functionality that go along with the drawing pad book. Um, next, we have quizzes. And for neural tube defects, there are six multi-choice uh, questions. It's just going to give these nice results. Um, obviously, I answered it incorrectly. Uh, then we have some additional exercises. These are all based on the drawing pad. There are some board highlights, depending on which exam or board you might be studying for, if that's the case, and then the download section. So that is the basics of Draw It to Know It. Uh, for purchasing, it's fully a la carte, or you can buy a package. Um, the nice thing about this for a library is that most of these topics can be used by all of your healthcare students. So you're looking at medical students, nursing students, um, biomedical science, PT, OT, um, biology, pharmacy, everyone. And pricing is actually really good. So I'll just stop there since we're running out of time, only have a couple minutes left. Um, does anyone have any questions? Jen, I, I haven't seen any questions come in yet. Um, but okay. I'll repeat what I've said before. If anyone listening wants to throw questions into the chat, please please go ahead and do that. Fantastic. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, Shannon. Great. A really cool overview of a, an amazing product, I think. Yeah, uh, it's anybody, one of those really programs, excited. <laughs> Thanks again, Shannon. Always a pleasure to, to see you. You too. Thanks, Jeff. Talk to you soon. Okay, so I'm going to take us back to our uh, starting screen one more time, just to set everything up for our fourth and final presenter for today's Taco Tuesday. Let me just get that up. Okay, so joining us uh, today from Gail, a longtime Wills vendor partner, Gail. We do a ton of work together. <laughs> Uh, I'm pleased to welcome Stephen Wilson. Stephen, um, can you can you hear us? Are you on the line? Oh, I see you here. Yep, yep, I can hear you all right. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you can take over and share yours. Awesome, thank you. Uh, one second here. All right, am I all, can you see my PowerPoint? Yep, we see we see the PowerPoint. Can you see? Is it the big screen or the little screen? We're seeing like the notes. Okay, the so the, the, the screen I didn't want you to see. Okay. How about now? Now it looks right. Okay, perfect. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, I just wanted to thank you, Jeff. It was good to finally meet you um, in virtual person, I guess. Um, but what I wanted to do today is I just wanted to go through one of our uh, hot 
kind of pieces of content uh, in Wisconsin, right? Um, and so Gale in Context for Educators is something uh, that's kind of picking up traction around the state. Um, so I'm just gonna go simply through a little bit about it. And then at the end, I'll show you a little bit about what it is, okay? Um, if anybody's listening to this and you don't know Gale and you wanna know more about Gale as a company, um, feel free to reach out to me or Courtney uh, at any time who are the reps in Wisconsin. So um, just to go through this really quick, All right, so to put it simply, Galen Context for Ed Educators Unlimited is two parts um, combined for one experience, right? So the Galen Context portion, um, Galen Context for Educators is actually a tool, right? Um, to organize, to collaborate, uh, to easily integrate this kind of content into the classroom, right? The bundle package, right, is a bundle package of the high quality library resources that you all know and love, uh, from Gale, okay? Um, and so what this does is this is a package that brings the both of them together and allows it to be easy for you to share resources uh, with the classroom, right? To get these library resources to be able to be used in the classroom, right? And so if we go through this, this is just a quick uh, screenshot of what the bundle package looks like, right? And so you can see all of the Galen Context databases um, that, that many of you know and love. Um, and so what this does, like I said, this for educators uh, portion is a tool to use these databases, just quite simply, okay? And so the tool, right? So the for educators portion, uh, this is a this is a, a, a tool to help bridge the gap between the library and the classroom, right? So it's easy to organize. There's lesson plans, assessments, um, and it's actually a really easy way to just search all of the databases, right? And so if we go through a little bit further here, um, what kind of benefit does it bring to the library, right? And so this makes it easy for you to share useful quality content with your teachers. Um, this is a one-stop shop for Gale content. And so you don't have to go into, you know, 20 different databases to do a project or five different databases or whatever it is, right? You have all of these in one area and it's easy to find, right? Easy to curate the content. Um, and save it, right? Because a lot of times, like if you have databases, you're working on things, maybe you have to put it in some other folder or something like that. This has everything for you in an easy to reach place, right? Uh, and so that covers ELA, social studies and science uh, very strongly. There's also SEL portion, but really um, this can cover most any topics in, in high school, okay? Um, and so, you know, this can really help you lead beyond the library, right? And also reach different types of learners where they are, okay? Um, and I just wanted to just show you that that some people also thought it was pretty cool too, right? It's pretty, this is an award-winning uh, piece of content um, and it's really just now starting to pick up traction um, across the state of Wisconsin, okay? So I just wanted to share that with you just to kind of give you a, a, a brief explanation of what it is. Uh, and then what I wanted to do is just give you a little dive into um, the actual product itself, right? And so this is Gale in Context for Educators. This is going to look very similar to the databases that you know, right? So you're going to have a search bar here. Um, what's going to be different is this is searching all of the databases. You can search all of the databases by curriculum standards. You could go in there and find Wisconsin specific curriculum standards. You can go in there and you can search by subject. Um, that dives down really nicely as well. Uh, there's lesson plans uh, as well as my class resources, which is going to be the folders that you see here, right? And so I, I, I saved these folders. I know it says Mississippi, but I saved these folders because they were very well done um, just to show you kind of the depth that you can go into uh, with these resources, right? And so if I was going to click into the folder, just to give you an idea of what you can do, you know, the idea here is to make it easy for you to help your teachers use this content in the classroom, right? And so you have, you know, not saying that you have to go this far, but you could, right? There's a curriculum standard here. 
Um, they have little, you know, you can take information from outside of Gale. So if you wanted to put a PowerPoint, if you wanted to put a Word document, you know, instructions, whatever it is, you could put that in there. Um, you could put in different websites. But then from Gale, you're getting all the content like encyclopedias, you're getting, uh, you know, YouTube videos, you can get Khan Academy videos, um, you can get the podcasts, um, pretty much everything that's in the Gale in Context databases, you can put into these folders, right? And you make these yourself. This isn't something that's pre made, right? And so this gives you the ability to be creative and curate this specifically for uh, your school and your standards, right? or whatever projects that, that you're working on, okay? Um, and so let's see, just to give you an idea of the depth, right? This is one curriculum standard or one instruction standard uh, in the state of Mississippi. And the idea here is to help the teachers supplement the textbooks, right? So to use these high quality library resources and just bring it in the classroom to make instruction a little bit better for everybody, right? Um, and so just in case, Let's see, okay. Um, I'm gonna go into here. So just in case there's anybody on here um, that's not super familiar with Gale and the technology that's involved, um, this is what it brings to the table, right? And so here you have an instructor's note that you can put in this. I'm not gonna go too much in depth into the specific technology, um, but what I did wanna show you is just some of the technology that all Gale content has, right? And so you have this translation feature, you can translate into any of 40 plus different languages. Uh, you have the ability to increase font size, decrease font size, different display options. So just recently we created an open, open dyslexic font, um, different line spacing, you can actually make words, um, different color, different background colors as well. Um, and there's a read to speak function, okay? And then if somebody doesn't like any of that, they can also go and print it off, right? So we're trying to meet every type of learner uh, where they are, right? So if somebody struggles with reading, they can click learn to, or read to speak, right? If somebody struggles with text that's too small, make it bigger, increase the font or increase the, the line spacing, right? Um, and so this does all that, right? And so to boot, there are assessments, right? You can do annotations, you can do clippings, right? You can share whatever you want with your students. Um, and so that's just kind of the basics of what you're able to do. Um, just like all Gale content, you have the ability to cite here. So it's super easy. You can export it to any of these places here as well. Um, yeah, so I think that that's, kind of where we are. Um, one more thing to note, right? Uh, there is this lesson plan portion as well. Um, and so if you wanted to supply your teachers with a high quality lesson plan about a certain project that they're doing here, right? Um, you can even, you know, go down to 15 minute lesson plans. You can do hour and a half lesson plans, right? There's a little bit of everything. And then this is being added to all the time. Right, so that's one more thing to note. Uh, another thing, without me getting in too much into the weeds here, um, the subject areas. So you can go in here, you know, you got elementary school, middle school, high school, um, and you can dive into these subjects as well. Okay, um, and so for example, if you're going to go into science, you could go into biology, and you can see the kind of depth that's in here. Okay. Um, anyway, I'm not going to go too much into this. If you'd like to uh, learn more about this, if you want to learn more about any Gale products, um, you can reach out to me or Courtney at any time, um, and we'd be happy to talk to you and go in a little bit more in depth uh, about the capabilities of this database. Um, anyway, thanks for your time, and if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks so much, Stephen. Um, I can say that uh, we've We've really seen some uptake on the uh, the four educators bundle. A lot, a lot of Will's members have been hearing about it, getting pricing, converting their kind of uh, oh, hodgepodge like number of Gale databases yeah. that they might, and finding a way to to kind of convert that into the to the big all inclusive package that you just described. It's been, I think, it's been pretty successful. You're seeing a lot of uptake other places too. Um, it, it depends. Every state is different, but I, I would say just recently, especially the last couple months in Wisconsin, it, it's it's come on pretty strong, and it's you know it's exciting to see because it can it can really make a difference in the kids' lives. So, 
yeah, that's that that certainly has been our experience just over the like yeah like the last half year or so. A lot of schools have been looking at it, and um, and I feel like we've had a, a lot of success in figuring out the right way. You know, if, if you've got Gale databases that would be included in this, they might have different start and end dates. We've been able to work really closely with Stephen and his colleagues to find the right way to you know, get you prorated out of the yep. small pages and into the big one, you know, it's not a problem. So don't yeah. don't think, oh, I've already got some of this stuff. How would I do it? We, we work with you and, and figure all that stuff out. So anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to everyone uh, who presented uh, with us today. I'm going to share my screen one more time just to take us uh, into the wrap up here. So thanks to all of our presenters. Thanks also to those of you who attended both live uh, and who might be watching uh, the recording. We still have more Taco Tuesday to come. Our next session, as you can see here on the screen, is on May 2nd. Um, I think I think that's still two weeks, right? Yeah, there's another two weeks. At some point, we, we end up jumping an extra week just to line things up. But May 2nd is our next session. So I hope you'll join us for another one. Thanks again for coming to Taco Tuesday and have a great afternoon. Bye, everyone. <laughs>